Hello and welcome back to Neural Data Science. I'm Aaron Newman and today we're going to talk about AI assisted coding with GitHub Copilot. This is probably the most exciting thing that's happened in the world of coding in a long time. AI has revolutionized a lot of areas. We've seen the new large language models like ChatGPT come out in the last year and GitHub Copilot is kind of the same idea except for writing code. It won't write all your code for you and it won't solve all your problems, but it's an amazing tool for learning and an amazing assistant to help you code more efficiently and be able to do things that you might not know how to do, but it'll do them a lot faster than if you had to go on the internet and search for solutions and try them out. So today we're gonna to go through the introduction to what is GitHub Copilot all about? How do we get it running and how do we use it? So what is GitHub Copilot? It's really kind of the marriage of ChatGPT and GitHub. So ChatGPT is a large language model that's been trained on a huge corpus of information from the internet. GitHub Copilot is a large language model that's been trained specifically on the material on GitHub. So github.com is this massive repository of code, primarily code, in all kinds of different languages, including Python, as well as text and all kinds of other stuff. And that formed the training base for GitHub Copilot. So in other words, GitHub Copilot is an AI assistant that's been trained to write code based on a lot of code that's out there on github.com. Now, of course, like any large language model, we can't trust everything that GitHub Copilot does. If it's been trained on everything on github.com, that means it's been trained on all kinds of code that maybe doesn't work or was written for versions of Python that are no longer the current version of Python. So there is the probability that it's going to generate some stuff that doesn't work, but on the whole, it generates stuff that works and works pretty well. So what do you need to actually get started with GitHub Copilot? So GitHub Copilot is an extension for VS Code, among other things, but that's the platform we use in this course. So you'll need VS Code. You'll need to have gone through our first lesson, uh, well, I guess the second video in the series on how to set up your computer for data science. If you've done that, you should have all the stuff you see here, but the core ones that we're gonna use are GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot Chat, and GitHub Copilot Labs. So those are all extensions that you will find in VS Code. And when we switch to VS Code in a minute, I will show you where those are and double check that you've got those installed. For this to work, you also need a GitHub account and GitHub Copilot isn't free for everybody. It's free if you have a student or a teacher account. So if you have one of those set up already, then you should be good to go. If not, and you can set that up, definitely go and do that. Otherwise, you can pay for a subscription to Copilot. Currently, it's, I believe, $10 a month. And we're going to be running this lesson in Python, so you need to have Python installed and working in VS Code. Okay, so there's some caveats in working with GitHub Copilot. I've already mentioned the fact that you can't always trust what it does, but of course with code we can test it. And in this series of lessons on using GitHub Copilot, we're gonna see how you're gonna test your code and make sure it's doing what you think it's doing. But the other big caveat in terms of following all on with this lesson is that as a large language model, GitHub Copilot isn't gonna necessarily generate the same code every time you type in the same prompt. And so when I was developing the material for the online textbook for these lessons, I didn't get the same code every time. And when other people tried using the same prompts I did, they didn't always get the same thing I did. And likewise, if you're following this lesson along and you're typing in prompts on your own, you may not get the same code generated by Copilot that you see me getting from Copilot. That's just the nature of how these large language models work and the experience of working with Copilot. And indeed, Copilot's being updated all the time. It's being trained on more and more material. So its outputs hopefully over time will just continue to get more accurate and maybe more stable, especially for relatively simple prompts. But in any event, the main point I'm trying to make here is if you type in a prompt as you're following along in this lesson, you don't see the code that I'm getting, that's okay. That's just the way it works. And what I want you to do is pay attention to what I'm doing and kind of the process that I'm going through in using prompts to generate code and especially in refining the prompts to generate code or using Copilot as a way of debugging code that either I write or that Copilot writes and understand the process and get used to working through that process. And so if GitHub Copilot's given you different material than what you're seeing on my screen, that's okay and that's a learning opportunity for you. All right, so here we go. Let's switch to VS Code and see how we actually prompt GitHub Copilot. All right, so I've switched to VS Code and I promised that I would show you the extensions. So we're gonna go over to the activity bar, click on extensions. And if you just search for Copilot, 
you'll see the top hits that pop up are GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot Chat, and GitHub Copilot Labs. You want all three of those extensions installed. We won't touch on Labs so much, but I encourage you to explore it on your own because it integrates some of the key features of Copilot as well as some experimental features. There's also a GitHub Copilot theme, which changes the color of your text and your syntax highlighting. So that's the theme that I have activated right now, just if you want your screen to look the same. Okay, so to start this lesson, what I'm going to do is create a new Jupyter Notebook file, and I'm going to type in that. This is a little different from some of my other lessons where I have a pre-made notebook file, but this is pretty simple stuff, so we're going to start from scratch here. So I'm in a folder for my AI-assisted lesson. I'm going to say new file, and I'm going to uh, say lesson underscore one, and I'm going to type dot ipy nb as the extension. And just by calling it a .py nb file, giving it that extension, it knows that I want to create a Jupyter Notebook file, and it does that for me. And it says select kernel. Your kernel may well be called base. In my case, the base one is not actually great. I created one specifically called demo. But whatever you have, we're not doing anything fancy with Python here, so you should be good to go. OK, the other thing to check is that Copilot is actually activated. The way you can tell that is if you look down at the bottom right corner of VS Code, you'll see this little icon here. It's a little Copilot icon, a lot like the graphic in the slides, just much simpler. And if I mouse over it, it gives me the option to deactivate Copilot. And I could disable it globally or just for Python. I don't want to do that, I'm just showing you there. But as long as it's there, that means Copilot's working for you. To use Copilot, you actually just have to type prompts. The best way to type prompts in Copilot is to use comments. So we've seen comments in previous lessons. In Python, you type a hashtag and a space, and then you type, typically it's the description of the code that you're writing. The cool thing about Copilot is you write the comments, and it interprets those as prompts, and it generates the code for you. So let's say generate a list of numbers. And you can see already Copilot's at work, and it's suggesting an addition or enhancement to my prompt which is from 0 to 9. And if I want to accept that prompt, and why not, you just hit tab, and that changes from sort of italicized and a little faded to full-on text. And my cursor is flashing at the end of that line. Now if I hit enter, it's going to suggest another prompt, and maybe I want to print that list. So let's hit tab again, hit enter, and you can see now it's suggesting code. And again, the suggested code appears, your cursor is still at the left side of the line, and the code appears as sort of a faded color, depends on your color scheme, and it's going to appear as italicized as well. And it's telling you, hit the tab to accept. The other option here is if you hold down the option key, which I believe is the, well, I guess it's the option key on Windows as well, and then the square bracket then it'll actually cycle between different suggested completions. So the other suggested completion here is actually just another prompt to print the first element of the list. I don't want that, I actually want the list. So I'm going to hit tab, and that uh, turns it into code with syntax highlighting. I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to suggest code for the next line of the prompt, which is printing the list. So here we're creating a list, we're calling it numbers, and it's a list in the range, uh, when we give range value of 10, remember that goes from 0 up to, but not including the value that we specify. So that's going to create a list from 0 to 9. And the second command will print it. Hit enter again. And GitHub Copilot doesn't prompt me to, well, doesn't suggest any additional code, because these two lines of code are going to do exactly what the prompt asks. So shift enter to run that cell in Jupyter. And sure enough, we get output, which is a list. We can tell it's a list because it's in square brackets. The items are separated by commas, and they're the integers from 0 to 9, just what we asked for. That's pretty much all there is to using GitHub Copilot, so the lesson's done. No, actually, we're going to go a little further, and we're going to see how we can do a few other things with GitHub Copilot. Let's keep working with lists, and let's combine two lists. So there's a couple ways. In the textbook, I type those in, but let's tell GitHub Copilot to do our work for us. And you can see often it makes some guesses about things that you might be doing next based on when it sees other examples on GitHub of people defining a list and then printing the list. Maybe the next thing they want to do is something with a path to a file 
We don't want to do that. So you can always, of course, ignore the suggestions that Copilot is giving you. And I'm going to say create a list of random numbers in the range of, let's say, 0 to 1. And let's be specific and tell it how many. Create a list of 10 random numbers in the range of 0 to 1. I don't want to print the list actually. So if you don't like what Copilot is suggesting, again, option and square bracket will allow you to cycle through different suggestions. It doesn't actually have any other suggestions here. The other trick is if you've decided, okay, I don't want to do any more prompting, just give me the code Copilot, hit enter. And then it gives me another prompt. So I don't want that either. This is classic Copilot. It's not actually giving me the code I want. So that's fine, this is kind of the way it works. I'm gonna hit enter again, and hit enter again. No, it really doesn't wanna generate that code. So the other thing you can do is hopefully you know enough Python by now to know how you would actually generate a list of 10 random numbers. We don't have to type the whole thing, but what if we say list underscore one equals, now it knows, okay, we're trying to write the code here, so it generates the code that we want. So random.random .random for underscore in range 10. Okay, so let's execute that cell, see what happens. We get an error. The name random is not defined. So one thing GitHub Copilot is not always great about is remembering to import a particular package that it needs before telling you to use that package in a line of code. So we'd like to keep this notebook kind of organized. So I'm going to edit this cell that I just ran and now, if you've been following along with these lessons, you probably know that to import a package, we type import. Oh, I lost the prompt there. Import, and just by typing import, it suggests random. So that's great. So now let's run this cell again. And it ran, it didn't give an error, and it didn't give us output. And we didn't ask for output, right? So let's go back to our cell and say, prompt it to say print the list. Print this one. Okay, created a print command and the argument it's getting is list underscore one. We'll run that and now we see we've got a list of numbers. That is awesome. I'm just going to delete all these extra lines here. I'm going to go down to another cell and I'm going to generate another list. So create a list of 10 random numbers in the range of 0 to 10 is its suggested prompt. I actually want to create another list of random numbers in the same range. Let's see. And it's smart enough. This is really cool. Look, it's suggesting list underscore two, and then the rest of the code is basically the same, identical to the code above. Uh, but cleverly, it's recognized that we already have a list underscore one, and it's capitalizing on that naming convention and suggesting list underscore two. So I'm just going to accept that. And again, it's prompting me with a prompt, print the list. It saw that I did that up in the previous cell, so it's saying, hey, he probably wants to do that same thing again. So I accept that, print list two, and okay. So now we've confirmed we get two lists with 10 values in the range of zero to one. What if we want to combine list one and list two and call it list underscore all? And so Copilot gives me the suggestion, list all equals list one plus list two. I'm just gonna see if it gives me alternative suggestions. It does not. Okay, so we're gonna roll with that and print the list. Now that's not very specific, but it can tell from the context that the list that I wanna print is not list one or list two, but the list I just created, list all. So again, reasonably intelligent. And we can see now it prints the list and there's many values. And we could count them manually or we could confirm that there should be 20 values there, right? Because we had 10 in list one, 10 in list two. Uh, so let's say Copilot confirm. <laughs> it's a little spooky, isn't it? It's like it's listening to me. It's not really listening, I don't think, but it is paying attention to what I'm doing and it's recognizing patterns in there that match with patterns that it's seen in lots of other samples of code. 
that it's been trained on. So it's going to print the length of list all. And the length is 20. So that is super cool. So this gives you an idea probably of how powerful GitHub Copilot can be. As a novice programmer, probably a lot of this is familiar to you. But at the same time, maybe, you know, certainly in the lessons in this course, we haven't talked about for underscore in range as a syntactic element. So you would probably never have thought to include that, but here it is, it's doing it for you. Now, of course, it would be a good idea to understand the code fully. So you might want to go and understand for yourself, look up what that for underscore in range means. But there's another way that we can get about that too, which is to ask Copilot to explain what it's doing. So in this case, I'm going to highlight, actually, I'm just going to highlight, well, I'll highlight the whole line. And if you go over to the activity bar on the left side of the screen, in my case, it's the bottom icon, it says chat. It's these two little chat bubbles. So I'm going to click that and I get GitHub Copilot chat interface here on the side of the screen, on the left side. And this is very similar if you've used ChatGPT in the past or Bing Chat that's built into the Microsoft Edge browser. This should be a very familiar sort of interface and you can just type natural language prompts. And since I've highlighted a line of code, the chat is contextually sensitive, meaning it can tell what I've highlighted or what cell that I've got highlighted. So I can say explain the highlighted line of code. And it tells me the highlighted line of code creates a list of 10 random floating point numbers between 0 and 1 using the list comprehension. The random.random .random function from the random module is used to generate each random number. The underscore, here we go, is used as a variable name to indicate that the loop variable is not actually used in the loop body. Cool. Okay. So what it's saying is that we kind of have this throwaway variable. For a for loop inside a list comprehension, we need to say for something in the range. But that variable is never used outside of the list comprehension or ever again, so we can just call it underscore, and that is a syntactic sort of signal to the reader of the code that that's a throwaway variable. We don't need to worry about it. It's just there for functionality purposes. And the other cool thing is now we've seen chat. Chat is giving us suggestions as well, and I can click on that suggestion if I want. How can I generate a random integer in Python? And it tells me how. So as an alternative or a complement to typing prompts as comments in code cells and then having Copilot generate the code, you can ask it questions in Copilot chat and it'll generate the code. And I find that's often a very effective way to work. When you're writing prompts as comments, as you saw in some of the stuff I was just doing, sometimes Copilot kind of goes awry and it just like, you know, I was saying generate a list of 10 random numbers in the range 0 to 1 and it was just giving me more prompts or recycling the prompt that I had already done or something like that. It was never generating code without me starting to type list one and then it figured out, okay, we got to write some code. Copilot chat can generate a block of code and the cool thing here is it knows to import random before it runs random or calls a function from the random package. So in that way it's a little more robust. And once I have that code, you can see if I mouse over it, there's a few icons that pop up. One is uh, copy, one is insert at cursor, and then there's more actions which include insert into new file or run in terminal. Probably won't want those too much. But if I click in an empty cell down here and then I click on this insert at cursor, boom, we get that. And so we've got the import command, we've got comments that tell us what each line of code is doing, and shift enter to run that, it generates a random integer, in this case four. Since it's random, if I run that cell again, I get a different number the next time, six this time. So that's kind of the core of using GitHub Copilot, is you can either type your prompts as comments. You could actually type prompts without the hashtag at the beginning. I'll point that out, but it's not very good practice. So generate a random number. A random number is between one and 10, okay. Copilot's English syntax isn't always that great. Hit enter, and it does that. So it generates a random number and multiplies it by 10, which is a way of getting that, because random.random .random will generate a value between 0 and 1. So if you multiply that by 10, you get a value between 1 and 10. Okay, so that's cool. The problem is that if I try and run this cell, I get an error because that prompt 
it's treating it as a valid line of code and well, as a line of code and tells me it's invalid. So you really want to, if you're typing those prompts, you really want to put the hash marks at the beginning. A couple of other tips, which you've kind of seen already, which are around coaxing Copilot to, to work. So I'm going to select this cell and hit B to get a new cell below the current cell. And let's come up with another prompt. Something a little more complicated, maybe. Say, create a list whose values are the names of the days of the week. That's a good one. Wasn't where I was going, but that'll work. Enter. And that works. I'm going to hit enter, print the list. Print days of week. So here's what I was going for, is if you prompt Copilot and it generates some code or another prompt, you keep hitting enter. At some point, often what it'll do is just start repeating itself. And that's not terribly useful, but I could say months of the year. Of course, you can always edit these prompts, right? And it comes up with that list. And print the list. Okay. And I hit tab and it fixes the indentation there. Let's bring this back up on the screen. Print months of year. And you can see it's using pretty intelligent variable names as well. And it's following Python conventions. Everything's lowercase in the variable name. It's using underscores to separate words. So that's all good. And OK, so here's a nice example, though, that although when I hit enter under days of the week, it just repeated the first prompt around days of the week. When I changed that to months of the year, it solved that, generated that code just fine. And then when I hit enter a couple of times after print months of the year, let's do that again. Now it's suggesting create a list whose values are the names of the season. So it's kind of picking up on the theme here of like days of the week, months of the year, seasons, and suggesting other things. And there's another thing that I will point out is so it generated the list seasons. If I hit enter once, Copilot does not give me any suggestions. So what's going on here is that Copilot is enforcing good coding style. And so my prompt was create a list whose values are the names of the seasons. We can do that in one line of code. We've now completed that task, so we don't need any more lines of code. And properly for good programming style, you would want an empty line before your next prompt or your next line of code. So as soon as I hit enter again, leaving that blank line, now it gives me another prompt. Let's say print the list, print seasons, enter. Again, it's not going to suggest anything. Hit enter again, and it just keeps going. And I will leave it to you how far you want to push this in terms of the number of lists it'll generate for you. But let's just complete this one. I've got the planets. You can see it's smart enough to know that Pluto is no longer a planet. Print planets. OK, so that's a lot. So I'm going to hit Enter. And it gives me all of those lists. So we've come to the end of this lesson. And just to summarize, GitHub Copilot is an AI-assisted coding tool that can generate code for you based on prompts you write using natural language. Copilot's sensitive to the context of your notebooks and can generate code based on code in other cells or even other files in your project. We haven't seen that yet, but it'll do that. Copilot is sensitive to the wording of your prompts and will generate different code based on how you phrase your prompts. We're going to see more of that in the next lesson. Copilot's also sensitive to the formatting of your prompts, so it'll generate different code based on how you format your prompts. For example, if you break a problem down into steps, where each step is a separate prompt, you'll get different code and usually better code, as we'll see in future lessons. Because of the generative nature of large language models like GitHub Copilot, the results aren't going to be the same every time you give it the same prompt, especially as you get into more complicated coding and asking it for more complicated tasks. You can ask Copilot to generate alternative code by pressing Option square bracket, which is Start square bracket on Windows, after you get a code suggestion. You have to wait until you get a code suggestion, but then option square bracket will give you alternatives if Copilot has any other suggestions. Sometimes with the simple stuff we've been doing in this lesson, there aren't really a lot of alternatives, so that's what you get. Copilot isn't perfect, and it might generate code that doesn't work or doesn't do what you want it to do. It's important to read and understand the code it generates and test to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And finally, Copilot isn't a replacement for learning to code. It's a tool that'll help you code faster 
And it'll help you learn to code. That Copilot chat explaining code that you're seeing can be really powerful if you encounter some code you've never seen before. And if you ask it to generate code, it's also going to give you not only the code, but an explanation. So that's super helpful. But at the same time, you still need to learn to code. And you need to understand what you're doing. As we'll see in later lessons, often without an understanding of the code and understanding of Python, what Copilot's doing and giving you is just going to be garbage and you're not going to be a happy person. But on the bright side, Copilot can be a great assistant not just for writing your code, but for learning to code and explaining what's going on. So that's where we're at. That's the end of the lesson. Remember to like and subscribe. And in the next lesson, we'll see how to use Copilot for some real live data science activities. See you there.